Okay, let's jump into chapter 9. It's the longest chapter. It deals with gas power systems. We start with internal combustion engines, the auto and the diesel cycle. We do not do the dual. So the auto and the diesel start by sketching a PV diagram, pressure volume diagram for the auto cycle. We start with a large volume at state one. We compress to a smaller volume at state two. Then you have constant volume heat addition to state three. Then expansion out to state four and then back to state one. So that completes the cycle. It's for a closed system undergoing four processes. Process one to two, two to three, three to four, and four back to one, which make a cycle. You can write the first law for the process one to two. So uh, let's say Q one to two in minus work one to two out is equal to U2 minus U1. You can write the same for all the other processes from two to three, Q two to three minus work two to three is equal to U3 minus U2. And then Q, uh, it's a bad looking three, three to four minus work, three to four is equal to U4 minus U3. And Q, four to one minus work, four to one equal to U1 minus U4. So we just wrote the, the first law for each of those processes. And what we want to do is we want to say, okay, during the process one to two, it's reversible and well insulated, so it's adiabatic. Sometimes we'll draw it like this, indicating hash mark or insulation. And so there's no heat transfer. And because it's reversible, S is equal to a constant from one to two, so it's isentropic. We could also sketch a temperature entropy diagram, and the process from one to two would be straight up because the temperature is going to go up, but it's isentropic, so it's constant S. Now from 2 to 3 is where we have heat coming in. Q, 2 to 3 is in. All right? But it's constant volume, isn't it? So is there any work? Is there any expansion or boundary work? No. So that work term is 0. And it looks like this. P is equal to a, not P is equal to constant, sorry. Volume is equal to a constant from 2 to 3. So we, peak, we hit our peak temperature at state 3 in the auto cycle. Then from 3 to 4, it's also adiabatic. It's also reversible, hence S is equal to a constant. So it's straight up and down on a TS diagram, down to state 4, and then back V is equal to a constant 4 to 1. So from 3 to 4, there's no heat transfer. And from 4 to 1, there's no work transfer. So of the Qs and Ws, of the 4 Qs and 4 Ws, 2 of the Qs are 0 and 2 of the Ws are 0 for the auto cycle. There is a parameter called the compression ratio. ratio. It's given the symbol R, and it's the ratio of the volume, the largest volume, to the smallest volume. The largest volume will be volume at 1 compared to the smallest volume, volume at 2. Well, the volume at 2 is the same as 3, and the volume at 1 is the same as 4, so you could switch those around, but 1 to 2. That's the compression ratio. You could put it in terms of specific volume as, as well as total volume. Let's compare that to our diesel cycle. So for diesel, we have a pressure volume diagram. You start here somewhere, and you're going to go through a compression process. Often, the compression ratio, R, there's the same, R is used for auto and diesel. The compression ratio is much higher for a diesel cycle, often around 10 is the compression ratio for an auto cycle gasoline engine and in the neighborhood of 20 for a diesel engine. So I show that getting closer to the y-axis before, and, and even go up higher, before it stops at state two. Now diesel 
doesn't have a spark plug, it has fuel injectors, and when it sprays in fuel, it's starting to combust because it's already so hot, and the fuel self-ignition temperature is below that. And so as long as you're spraying in fuel, it's combusting, so we model it in the diesel cycle as constant pressure expansion. Then stop adding in fuel, spraying in fuel, and you continue with the adiabatic expansion down to four. So there's our cycle, one, two, three, four, and you can compare it with the, the auto cycle. So the diesel cycle has, um, let me try and draw it like this. It's insulated, so adiabatic, I mean, so S is equal to a constant there. You have the heat addition from two to three. It's insulated again, and so it's S is equal to a constant. And I'm going to show it because this is what the book does. We'll show this heat addition Q four to one is coming in, but we know that it is going to be predicted to be negative because it's a heat rejection, just like here, Q four to one, and we anticipate that to be negative. We can write our first law down for process one to two, Q one to two minus work one to two, U two minus U one. This Q one to two is zero. And we get exactly the same equation, don't we? For the energy balance, for the process from one to two, for the auto and the diesel cycle, they're the same. But the difference is in two to three. So Q, two to three, minus the work two to three is equal to U3 minus U2. Is that work two to three equal to zero for the diesel cycle? No. And that's because it's expansion, so the area under the curve. Well, we like that area under the curve because it's just a rectangle. It's pretty easy to make that computation. So the work is the integral PdV, which is P times V3 minus V2. True? So what we'll do is we'll throw all of that over to the other side of the equation. And so the equation becomes Q2 to 3 is equal to H3 minus H2. How many people remember reading that or seeing that? How many people need to look at the book and read it maybe? How many people want me to go and restate that? Say it slower? Say it faster? Say it three times? <laughs> This is one of those tricky spots, okay? What you have to do is when you bring that over, so it becomes, um, let me kind of show it this way. You, you come over with a P3V3 minus a P2V2. Because that P2 is equal to P3, so I can put, when it multiplies V3, I put P3, and when it multiplies V2, I put P2, okay? And then I lump this term, that's just H3, and I lump together this term, and that's just H2. That's the definition of enthalpy. So the amount of heat put in is the difference in H, not the difference in U for the diesel cycle. Well, it's very similar for 3 to 4, is it not? The energy balance is the same, as well as for 4 to 1, they're the same. Now, what's different about the work 3 to 4 where those U's is that you're not expanding from 3 to 4 by the full compression ratio. You're only expanding from 3 to 4. So in addition to talking about the compression ratio, you still have that compression ratio, V1 over V2, but you also have what they call the RC, or the cutoff, cutoff ratio, which is V3 divided by V2. That's a positive number. It's typically around two, two and a half, three maybe. Um, and so it's greater than one. And it's, it's when the fuel, they're modeling it as cutting off. And now it's just isentropic expansion instead of constant pressure heat addition. So we have two parameters that characterize the diesel. Compression ratio, cutoff ratio, right? All right. Now, 
you can do a analysis assuming variable specific heats. All right. So you have variable specific heats as well as you can assume constant specific heats or you can do a cold air standard analysis where the constant specific heats are, are evaluated at ambient temperature all right um, so not only do we have an auto with variable and an auto with cold air standard analysis a diesel with variable specific heats a diesel with constant specific heats you know you have a lot of choices and you have to keep them straight but let me flush out uh, something here. If you take a look at uh, back at uh, chapter six, when you had constant specific heats, you had an ideal gas undergoing an isentropic process. There's three really important equations which fall out for that case. And so how do you relate changes in temperature, T2 and T1, to the change in volume v1 and v2 so if i want to resketch it because uh, we, we we start at one and we go to two so this is on a pv diagram from v1 to v2 and that compression process i can get t2 true t2 is equal to t1 times v1 over v2 to the K minus 1. It works because it's S is equal to a constant, isentropic compression or process. This is equal to T1 times the compression ratio, R, to the K minus 1. Likewise, you can get P2 is equal to P1, using this equation now, times R to the K. See that? So when you have a cold air standard analysis, that means constant specific heats, you have analytic expressions for changes in temperature, changes in pressure. So if I jump back, I can maybe fit some more in here. Uh, let's go ahead and try right here. If it's cold, what is U2 minus U1? Is that C sub V times T2 minus T1. That's true. And U3 is that C sub V T3 minus T2. So when you do a cold air standard analysis, you, you go around trying to get the temperatures T4 minus T3 and C sub V T1 minus T4. And once you have those temperatures, you can uh, calculate the Q's and then calculate some parameter of importance, let's say as the uh, thermal efficiency of the cycle. All right. Well, there's one way to do that, and that is by solving a problem. So let's go ahead and solve a problem. So we have a diesel cycle. Assume a cold air analysis, or perform a cold air analysis on this diesel cycle. It starts. Uh, at 300 Kelvin and 85 kilopascal for uh, state one at the start of the compression stroke. The compression ratio is 18, so maybe R is equal to 18 right here. And the cutoff ratio R sub C is 2.2. True. On the basis of a cold air standard analysis using this value of C sub V, this value of C sub P, which gives us a K of 1.4. Determine the temperature at the end of the compression stroke. So go ahead and sketch PV diagram. Oops. Put state 1 at the beginning, state 2 at the end of the compression stroke, 3 and four to finish the cycle so they want to know t1 well we just oops t2 that's what we want to calculate that's t1 times r to the one point well k minus one right thumbs up if you agree good so you could substitute numbers there um, 
What about the peak temperature? Where is the peak temperature for part B? Is it at state 2 or state 3? It's just state 3. And you can see that clearly on a temperature entropy diagram. Temperature entropy. You go up and then you go up some more to 3. And then back down and over. Okay, one, two, three, four, temperature entropy diagram. So how do I calculate that temperature at three? Well, one thing you continue to use is it always behaves as an ideal gas. And since it always behaves as an ideal gas, we always know that P2, V2 is equal to RT2, or P2, V2 divided by T2 is equal to a constant named R, and that I, is the same no matter if I'm at P3, B3, or like that, T3, right? Does that equation make sense? And so I say, uh, looking at comparing P, uh, state 2 and state 3, the pressures are the same. And what we find is that T3 is equal to T2 times V3 divided by V2. I'm going to pause. And I'll wait to see. Did you did I make a mistake with the algebra or thumbs up? Do you agree? Does, does it look okay? And so what is that ratio of V3 to V2? The cutoff ratio, that's right. So it's the max peak temperature is T2 times cutoff ratio. Can I put in degree C if they gave me the temperatures in degree C? No, it needs to be absolute temperature. It's embedded right here. This must be absolute temperature, just like that must be absolute pressure. How about the peak pressure? Hey, I just solved for the peak pressure is P2. Why did I skip that one? Sorry, got ahead of myself. So the peak pressure is P2, which is the same as P3, true? And we had an equation for P2 is equal to P1 times the compression ratio to the K, true? We just had that on the previous sheet. Now, what about D? What is the heat addition for the cycle? Uh, so, if you're, this is only the heat coming in because we're going to compare that to the workout. We always have to throw some heat away, so I'm not really interested in Q net. I just want to know what the Q that came into the cycle, and the Q that came into the cycle is two to three. True? Just two to three. So how do I calculate that Q2 to 3? Oh, that's the H3 minus H2, which is C sub P, T3 minus T2. And we just calculated both T2 as well as T3. Make sense? And then the net work, you can see what we're going. The answer to part D and the answer to part E are used to calculate the thermal efficiency, what we need to calculate for part F. So what is the work net? There's a couple ways you can do it. You can just say, I'm going to calculate the work 1 to 2 and add to it the work 3 to 4 and the work whoops, 1 to 2 plus work 2 to 3 plus the work 3 to 4 plus the work 4 to 1. Only one of those are d 0 for the diesel cycle. The other three are non-zero. The work one to two, it better be negative. The two to three is positive, and this one is positive. That's one approach to get work net. What's the alter alternative approach? Q net. Is work net equal to Q net? It is, yeah. And then Q net is Q1 to 2 plus Q2 to 3 plus Q3 to 4 plus Q4 to 1. And two of these are 0. 1 to 2 is 0. And 3 to 4 is 0. 2 to 3 is a large positive, And 4 to 1 is negative. We anticipate those signs. So you could compute work net because here is already Q2 to 3. So what is uh, Q4 to 1? It's equal to U1 minus U4, true, which is C sub V 
T1 minus T4, and one, temperature at 1 is lower than the temperature at 4. You see that is a negative quantity. So you calculate work net that way. And then the thermal efficiency. What about the thermal efficiency? That's work net divided by Q2 to 3. Before you slug through the numbers, make sure you get the, the, the lay of the land with equations and why and how you do it. And I think you can fill in the details here. True? You feel comfortable about this one? Good. Well, here's a tough problem, and it's a derivation, and I know that may not be high on your priorities, seeing derivations, but uh, it's good to see a few derivations. So let me uh, outline uh, this derivation. So it has derived the equation for the thermal efficiency of the diesel cycle, assuming cold air standard analysis. And here's the equation. Let's make sure we understand each parameter. What is K? Ratio of specific heats around 1.4 for air. What is R? That's the compression ratio, true. And what is R sub C? It's the cutoff ratio. Are there any other parameters in that equation? No. And what we do typically is uh, you'll have a plot where you plot the thermal efficiency as a function of the compression ratio. And for a particular K equal to 1.4 with a cutoff ratio of 2, you'll get a line like that. And you'll see that your thermal efficiency improves as you increase the compression ratio for a diesel engine. The same trend occurs for the thermal efficiency of an auto cycle, assuming cold air analysis. Now, how do we begin this analysis? Well, go back. What is thermal efficiency? Is it work net divided by Q in? And could I express that as Q net divided by Q in or 2 to 3? And is that Q2 to 3 plus Q4 to 1 divided by Q2 to 3. Let's go ahead and make another sketch. Uh, I'll tuck it in right here to try and put it all on one page. But it's a sketch that you've seen before. Pressure volume diagram. You go up to 1, to 2, to 3, to 4, and back. True? That makes sense? And so the Q in is here and a negative q in is q4 to 1 which will be negative okay so this equation the thermal efficiency boils down to 1 minus or 1 plus q4 to 1 divided by q2 to 3 and it's starting to look like what we're shooting for but I'll do this I'll put a minus sign here and a minus sign there because isn't 4 to 1 a negative entity by itself, and now a negative 4 to 1 is a positive entity. True? All right. So let's go ahead and uh, continue this. It's 1 minus C sub V T4 minus T1 divided by C sub V T3 minus T2. And the CVs cancel. I pause. I know I had that negative sign switch. But am I on the right track or have I made an error? Am I on it? Yeah, that's in, but it's a negative in, which means it's an out, right? Trying to follow the textbook here. So, so now what we can do is you have 1 minus, and if you pull out uh, T1, oops, I'm sorry. This right here was an error. What is C, What is uh, the Q2 to 3? That's C sub P, isn't it? Is it not? It's C sub P delta T for Q2 to 3 because it's constant pressure heat addition. It's a difference in enthalpy. So what we have is we have 1 over K, K ratio of specific heats times. Then we pull out T1 from that each term in the, in the numerator, so you have T4 over T1 minus 1. And you pull out T2, each term in the denominator, so you have T3 divided by T2 minus 1. 
True. Okay. Now, we look at and recall some of those relationships between the temperatures, and we recall that uh, T1 or T2 divided by T1 is what? R to the K minus 1. We've used that result before. So when we see this ratio right here, you can replace it by 1 over the compression ratio to the K minus 1. Now what about this T4 over T1? Well, expand that out to the side. T4 over T1, is that equal to T4 over T3 times T3 over T2 times T2 over T1? Yeah. And we already dealt with T2 over T1. That's R to the K minus 1. True. And a little bit of work gets T4 over T3. Well, what is T4 over T3, or let me try it this way. T3 over T4 is equal to V4 over V3 to the K minus 1. It's just algebra here. That V4 over V2 um, times V2 over V3 to the k minus 1 and that ratio of volumes v4 to v2 is the compression ratio and this ratio of volumes is 1 over the cutoff ratio to the k minus 1 so what we find is this is equal to r sub c over r to the k minus 1 and so this r to the k minus 1 cancels with this r to the k minus 1 and all we're left with is t4 over t1 is equal to the cutoff ratio to the k minus 1 times t3 over t2 okay so um, so you get uh, that that is what goes right there all right, so let me scroll down a little bit and clean this up. We have 1 minus 1 over the R to the K minus 1 times, in parentheses, 1 over K times, then we have R sub C to the K minus 1, true, minus 1, and then what is T uh, times, sorry, times T3 over T2? I should have put that in there. What is T3 over T2? Um, we did that already. T3 over T2, is that the cutoff ratio? T3 over T2? And so if I put in the cutoff ratio, R sub C right there, then I get that T4 over T1 is equal to R sub C to the K. True? It's a lot of work, but here you go. R sub C to the K minus 1. And then down below, you had just T3 over T2, which is just R sub C minus 1, close parent, close bracket. And let's see if I can just scoot up a little bit. There it is. Same equation. So QED. What we set out, set out to show is shown. Any comments on that? Did I make an error? Do you see any errors? Look good. Let's solve this problem. So we have an air standard diesel cycle operates with principal states, with state one being the start of the compression stroke. So we can go ahead and go ahead. Always make sure that we have the diagrams down for these cycles. It's a little long there. 
one to two to three to four for the diesel cycle. And they give us a table. So here's state one, then state two, three, and four. Let's check out the values of pressure. 85, then it jumps way up. And then two and three have the same pressure. Does that make sense? And then it dumps back down to state four. The pressure at state four, though, is still higher than the pressure at state one. Let's take a look at the temperatures. Starts at 300, compression, you're up almost 900 Kelvin. Then you go almost to 2,000, back to 780 Kelvin. So those temperatures look reasonable. And internal energy is a function of temperature only, as well as enthalpy is a function of temperature only. So you just evaluate those properties, accounting for variable specific heats. So the first question is, what is the heat addition for the cycle Q2 to 3? Is that H? 3 minus H2. And so you just know that you need to use enthalpies for the heat addition. And you, there's the difference between those two values for that heat addition, okay? What about uh, the second one? What is the net work for the cycle in kilojoules per kilogram? Work net. You can calculate work 1 to 2 plus 2 to 3 plus 3 to 4, or you can just do that's equal to Q net, and Q net is Q 2 to 3 plus Q 4 to 1. I already have from part A 2 to 3, so Q 4 to 1 is, what is Q 4 to 1? Is it, what is it? Is it U or H? Difference in U's or difference in H? It's difference in U. Is it U4 minus U1 or is it U1 minus U4? Well, uh, right there, uh, when you do the auto and diesel cycle, go from state 1 to 4 for a process and write the first law down for that process all right naturally when you have a closed system it's a delta u over there the only time that it turns into a delta h right right here is because there is a non-zero work and it can be evaluated as a p delta v and when you bring it over to the other side constant pressure work then it becomes a delta h and that always throws students for a loop. Thank you for asking. It gave me an op another opportunity to repeat it. And what percent of students will botch it on the final exam? Too many. Too many. Too many. So hopefully um, your question helps more than just yourself. Um, so. Are the last two cycles the same for the diesel? Uh, three to four and four to one? Yes. That's right. The only difference is three to four is an expansion. Auto goes the whole way, the, like the inverse of the compression stroke. But the, the diesel only goes from V3 to V4, which is not as uh, large of an expansion. Um, does that make sense? You, you only had to expand from here to here for three to four versus way back here to here for three to four for the auto. So... Those volumes of ratios will look like um, a multiplication of both the compression and the cutoff ratio. For example, uh, V4 divided by V3 is V4 divided by V2 times V2 divided by V3, which is R divided by RC. When you use that in the cold air analysis, You'll see, well, why is it before it was just R? Now it's R over uh, R sub C. That's why. So, uh, so which one was right? Was this one right or 1 minus 4, right? So it's U1 minus U4, true? And that is a negative uh, quantity. And then you have this negative quantity added to the positive quantity, which still should be overall positive. 
because it's a net it's a it's a net Q in net work out. Okay, what is the compression ratio? Well, they didn't give it to us. And the other problem, they told us up front what was the compression ratio. But here they give you a table of properties. So the compression ratio, we just recall, okay, the compression ratio is V1 divided by V2. True? Is that true? And is V1 always RT1 divided by P1? Because it's always an ideal gas. Likewise, V2 is that RT2 divided by P2. You cancel the R's. They're the same. And so you just take T1 divided by T2. So it's T1 over T2 times P2 over P1. And you get the compression ratio R. Just using the pressures and temperatures. Does that make sense? What about the cutoff ratio? R sub C. Well, go back and say, is that V3 over V2? And then substitute for V3. That would be um, T3 over P3. Likewise, V2 would be T2 over P2. This simplifies a little bit because look at the pressure at 2 and the pressure at 3. They cancel. And we're back with the equation we had before that the cutoff ratio is T3 over T2. So I just take the numeric value of this temperature divided by that temperature, T3 divided by T2, and I have the cutoff ratio. And now when we get to the Brayton, it's an open system analysis. Closed. Open.